Praise the Lord. Well, tonight we're concentrating our thoughts again in Ruth chapter 2, and uh, we'll be concentrating our thoughts from verses 19 to 23 to conclude chapter 2. And this is our 12th study in the book of Ruth. And tonight we're looking at the title a glorious redemption a glorious redemption now for the purpose of people who tune in to our channel after tonight we're having a, a break a recess in the month of august and so there won't be a bible study on wednesday night during the month of august but we recommence in chapters three and four of the book of Ruth in September. So please bear that in mind if you don't see the talks on the channel for another month, but we do recommence chapters three and four in September. Praise the Lord. Now then, let's read Ruth chapter two. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabites said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I might find favour. And she said to her, go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little in the house. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Then she said, let me find favour in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Now Boaz said to her at meantime, come up here and eat of the bread dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers and he passed parched grain to her and she ate and was satisfied and kept some back. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young man saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. Also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her so she gleaned in the field until evening 
and beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Then she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. So she brought out and gave to her what she had kept back after she had been satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, where have you gleaned today and where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. And Naomi said to her, this man is a relation of ours, one of our closest relatives. Ruth the Moabite said, he also said to me, you shall stay close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with these young women and that people do not meet you in any other field. So she stayed <laughs> close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest, and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. Now, over recent weeks, We've studied quite a bit in chapter two and seen about the, Ruth's work. We've seen her, how the favor um, she received. And then last week, we were looking at verses 17 and 18, and we saw how Ruth is a picture of the diligent Christian. And we saw some remarkable things about her and very quickly last week we saw Ruth's faithfulness and when the fact that um, we read in verse 17 that um, she gleaned in the field until evening she wasn't lazy she was willing to work from morning until evening and we know that she was faithful in her work and then we saw very quickly i'm going through this um ruth's carefulness how she beat out what she had gleaned and she beat it out she didn't just pick up anything but and take everything with her but she made sure that the chaff and the straw were thrown away and she only took home the choicest grain. And we applied that to us as Christians, how so many Christians will just believe anything, anything they read in a book, anything they hear on the radio or television, or anything they hear, even in some churches, rather than saving the scriptures and searching them and testing them and seeing is it really thus says the lord and we encourage each other only to take the finest of the wheat to get the word of god to check it and uh, not to make a doctrine out of one scripture but to take our teaching from what the whole of the bible teaches and maybe it's said of us that we are noble people and search the scriptures. Well, Ruth certainly beat out the rubbish and kept the best grain. So we saw her faithfulness, her carefulness, but notice we saw her thoughtfulness because she'd gleaned, she'd beaten, and now she's got an ephah of barley, but she didn't just keep it all to herself, to make herself healthy and fat, but she took it into the city. And then she was gleaning for Naomi. She had others that she wanted to be fed and satisfied and sufficed. And she made sure that they sufficed of well. And you know, friends, we can be guilty of knowing the gospel, understanding the gospel, understanding the word of God, and then keeping it all to ourselves 
but you know the lord encourages us to let our light shine before others and to take it with us and we that we would be ever ready like ruth to glean to beat it out and to take it out into the city as diligent christians well tonight as i said we're looking at verses 19 to 23 and if you're anything like me on first reading you might think to yourself whatever is significant about these verses is it not just a conversation between ruth and her mother-in-law but you know friends there is great significance in these verses we find in verse 19 naomi said where have you gleaned today and she finds out it's boaz's field and then there in verse 20 she says blessed be he of the lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead and then we find out she finds out also that this boaz is a relative of Naomi's now we were told that way back in verse one there was a rel relative of Naomi's husband a great man of wealth of the family of Elimelech his name was Boaz but Ruth didn't know that yet and it's quite interesting that uh, Ruth finds out in this chapter in verse 20 that he was a relation and a close relative of the family and uh, we find that very clear instructions were laid in verse 21 when ruth said um, he said to me you shall stay close by my young men until they finished all the harvest and we find in verse 23 she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest. And you know, friends, the idea was that she was gonna keep fast in the field, keep busy, keep working. And you know, friends, it's wonderful here because it's another reminder of something for us, that we are to keep fast in the field of Christ by the Saviour's side, not wandering into any other field. But, you know, we find this conversation is also a wonderful reminder of something. Not only the generosity of Boaz, but of the glorious, that redemption that Boaz and his generosity is a type of. Because we see in these verses the generosity of Christ, the redemption that he gives to our souls, and we, as those that are saved, the redeemed of the Lord, can utter a similar benediction like that of Naomi, and say when she said that Boaz is blessed, and the Lord our God blessed for all that he has done for us. Now, there's three things I want you to notice about this portion tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, the knowledge of redemption, and then the kindness in redemption. And thirdly, we will touch very briefly on the kinsman of redemption. So number one, the knowledge of redemption. Look at the verse 19 again her mother-in-law said to her where have you gleaned today in other words whose field have you been in and ruth not knowing if naomi would know boaz uh you know you can almost picture her saying well actually naomi it was the third field down the road and said uh, and uh, it was actually it was boaz's field she reveals the owner but something more interesting that than that we find here that 
this man was a relative, a close relative of the family. And uh, it's quite interesting because when you think about it, as we've said in previous weeks, this man took interest in a complete stranger. She said to him in verse 10, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And um, here we have this uh, thing again in verse uh, 18 where she was able to bring back those handfuls of purpose because someone had noticed her. Someone had taken clear notice and knowledge of her. Someone had discerned and laid distinction on her. In fact, Naomi said in verse 20, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. And you know, friends, there is a type of Christ in this man, Boaz. Because Christ, our heavenly Boaz, to knowledge of us. And not only to knowledge and notice of us, but bestowed his favor upon us. Remember, Ruth was a Moabite woman. It said in verse 5, whose young woman is this? And... Um, the servant answered and said, it's the Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she was only there because of the goodness of the Lord. In fact, if you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and to verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 10, You'll remember, I think we quoted from this um, yeah. the other week, when yeah. God told Israel to love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And remember how those farmers were given instructions, how they to feed the fatherless and the widows and the strangers with what was left from the harvest. And she was only there because God made a law that landowners and farmers were to let the widow and the stranger come and glean that which is left so that the stranger could be fed. It was part of the law of God. She was a foreigner. She was different from anyone else. No doubt she looked different from anyone else. Maybe the color of her skin was different from anyone else and so many would have cast her off but Boaz to knowledge <coughs> of her. and you know friends if you come to <coughs> chapter two because the point is this that you and I were sinners in the sight of God and strangers no better than that Moabite damsel in that sense spiritually we were strangers to the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from our heavenly Boaz, strangers from Christ. And yet in Ephesians 2, 12, it says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Oh, friends, does it not remind us of our condition as we sit in Leyland tonight? This is what I find amazing. Because look back at, keep your finger in Ephesians, but look back at Ruth 2 verse 10. She said, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreign, foreigner? And yet her mother-in-law could say in verse 19, blessed be the one who took notice of you. And friends, isn't that what Christ has done for us? 
take notice and take note of us. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll, um, we'll go back there now. Ephesians chapter 1. And let's just have a look at verses 3 to 7. Because it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. All oh, thank God tonight our heavenly Boaz to knowledge of us. Now, these verses are quite wonderful because Christ has chosen us not because he thought we were any good. He's not chosen us because he thought we would be any holier than others. He's not chosen us because he thought that you were more clean living than your neighbor. It's none of these things. But he just took knowledge, took notice. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Lord we have tonight. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 he says that you receiving the end of your faith sorry 1 peter chapter 2 verse 9 i was reading chapter 1 he says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Friends distinguished and discerned by Christ. And yet, friends, we only have these privileges because of the language of Ruth chapter 2, that Christ, our heavenly Boaz, has taken knowledge of us. Didn't she, Naomi, say, blessed be the one Amen. to notice of you you know ruth had said yeah. there back in chapter 2 and verse 10 she'd said why have i found favor take notice of me since i am a foreigner but you know here find in these latter verses they all be saying blessed be the lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and... but secondly tonight let's look at the kindness in redemption because if you look at this verse 20 that is a wonderful phrase that we have just read blessed be he of the lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the only one to it you know, that was a wonderful attitude for yeah. yeah. Naomi to possess. Well, it's, it's like she was too long. so yeah. thankful yeah. to yeah. the Lord. Come with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Because they don't have a door. I'm yeah. Thessalonians oh. chapter 5. Just it off. And to yeah. verse yeah. 8. Do it. Make sure it's. Yeah. yeah. Let us who are of the day be sober. Yeah. putting on the breastplate of faith and love Degrees, as a yeah. helmet the hope of salvation for god did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our lord jesus christ and then verse 18 in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus you you know friends this is what ruth was doing she was uh, naomi was doing she was giving thanks to the lord for for 
the kindness. And she noticed, she says, kindness to the living and the dead. Isn't it a wonderful, strange statement? Blessed be the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Of course, it's not talking about praying for the dead. It's not saying masses for the dead or giving money for the dead. It's just simply saying, just remember, Naomi's been around a long time. She'd been a relative of Elimelech's. And when she said, blessed be if he's not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead, no doubt she was saying, I remember when Boaz was kind to Elimelech before he left. It's just, you know, I remember when he was kind to Marlon and to Chilean when they were young boys before they left the house of bread. And Naomi remembers this, you see his kindness to the living in Ruth and his kindness to the dead from her husband and her sons, even though she's been away from Moab, from Bethlehem all that time. She's been away in Moab for 10 years. Her two sons are dead. Her husband's dead. Ruth's husband's dead as well. She's gone through all that. But one thing that remained with her was the kindness of Boaz to her family. She remembers the kindness of this man and she says, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living, that's Ruth, and to the dead. And you know, friends, even on a personal level as believers, it's good to be kind, isn't it? Because you know, friends, you can be a walking Bible to your neighbors, to the people you come across, and people will remember that. They do remember kindnesses given. Things that didn't have to be done, but were done. And this was a wonderful testimony of Boaz that he was kind to the living and kind to the dead. But even in that, do we not see a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because I'm talking now about his kindness to those who were spiritually dead. It was his kindness, the Bible says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. You know, we live in a society, you don't need me to tell you, we underestimate sin. Society that underestimates the wrath of God. A society that underestimates the punishment of hell. And yet, we find that the word of God at no point makes it a trivial or a blasé matter. And yet... In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, we're told these wonderful words. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So as we look at Boaz, we can see our Lord Jesus Christ, because he was kind to us who were spiritually dead. That he gave us his love, he gave us his mercy, he gave us his grace. And that's why after those words where he said you as he made alive in trespasses and sins, he says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, 
by grace you have been saved. Aren't you glad that the kindness of the Lord continues and remains all the time that we're living on this earth for him? I think of the words of St. Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. It was quoted by, I think, did, have you, did you quote this on Sunday? Well, somebody else, well, somebody's quoted it recently. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, a distress, a persecution, a famine, a nakedness, a peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But friends, Christ is kind then in his redemption. But you see, friends, he also shows kindness to the living. Because you know, friends, he rose up, he ascended into heaven. And right now he's living and making intercession for us, the living, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter seven and verse uh, 25, it says, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. He's still praying. So surely the, there's still kindness in the Lord for us tonight. Hallelujah. And what's more, his kindness will send him back for us. Hallelujah. That's why we've been singing that lovely hymn tonight. What a day, glorious day, that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. And we know that Christ is coming for us because we're told in the first book of Thessalonians chapter four, and verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And then he says, therefore, comfort one another with these words truly it could be said of boaz that he showed kindness to the dead elimelech marlon chilean but he'd also shown kindness to naomi and to ruth and how much could it be said of boaz it, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, friends, our heavenly Boaz hasn't withheld any good thing from us. But I want you to know, thirdly, not just the knowledge of redemption and the kindness of redemption, but thirdly, the kinsman of redemption. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to look at this idea of a kinsman redeemer in far greater detail in later studies. But I just want us to glance tonight a little bit at it. But look at what we read in the last sentence of verse 20 down to verse 23. 
Naomi said to her, this man is a relation of ours, one of our closest relatives. Ruth the Moabites said, he also said to me, you shall stay close by my young men until they finish all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it's good, my daughter, that you go out with these young women and that people do not meet you in any other field. So she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Now, the idea of a kinsman. Notice she said, this man is a relation of ours. In the authorised version, it's this man is a near kin of us. And a kinsman is, de de is defined as one who has right to redeem. Now, Boaz, by the laws of Israel, had a right to redeem Ruth. Christ is our kinsman, one that hath right to redeem. Now, not just anybody had a right to redeem. He had to be a very particular person. And he had to represent the offended party to represent the one who committed the offence. You know, friends, we've only one that had the right to redeem our souls, haven't we? And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. He was the only one. And you know, when it says great is the mystery, it means a mystery is something that wasn't revealed, but now we do understand. And that's why Jesus can be our kinsman redeemer, because it says in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, the only one acceptable. But Boaz was the man who was able to redeem, if you like, Ruth. He was the one who was able to rescue her from her condition. Now, we're going to look a lot at this in detail after the August recess. But, you know, one of the duties of the kinsman was that when the harvest was coming to an end, it was generally accepted that a kinsman would marry or take a wife of a deceased relative. And you know, we find something of a picture of Christ in that even as well. It says in Jeremiah chapter eight, Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20, I think it is. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Now, that was what the people were saying there. But you see, it's the language of a kinsman that someone would take someone undeserving at the end of harvest. And for them, the harvest was past. The summer was ended. They weren't saved. But for us, like Ruth, a type of the believer, we can say we are saved because of our heavenly Boaz, our kinsman who has redeemed us. And remember, friends, at the end of all this, just as they would marry somebody at the end of barley harvest, we've got a Christ that is coming for his bride, the church. I believe that when Naomi actually said to Ruth, 
daughter in law. After Ruth had said, he, shall, uh, he also said to me, you shall stay close by my young men until they've finished all of the harvest. And Naomi said, it's good, my daughter-in-law, that you go out with these young women and that people do not meet you in any other field. She wanted Ruth to stay in the harvest field. See, remember, Ruth's an old woman by now. She's a bit long in the tooth. But she's witnessed many harvests in the past in Bethlehem, in the house of bread, and she knew that the kinsman would marry. And so she encourages Ruth. I just wonder, you know, if she already knew that something was gonna come of this, because she encourages Ruth to stay, and she says, make sure that they don't meet you in any other field you know friends at the end of time there's going to be a wedding feast for the church we read about it in revelation chapter 19 verses 6 to 9 on what a day it will be you know friends it's important that we're gleaning in the right field in the harvest field ready for our savior who's coming for his bride let me just remind you of that day in Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to 9. Because it says here in these verses of Scripture that we have before us tonight, it says, I heard it was, were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was to be granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Well, you know, just as Boaz was to become the kinsman redeemer, as we shall see, Christ is our kinsman redeemer, and he has a right to purchase our souls because of what he did on the middle tree of Calvary's hill. So between redemption and glorification, let's take the advice of Naomi. Keep fast in the same field, in the harvest field for Christ. Stay close to Christ. Don't be going to another field, but work hard for Christ till the end when he comes from his bride. You know, it says she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and wheat harvest. She dwelt with her mother-in-law. And we'll find when we come back to the book of Ruth, some wonderful things happen that have a, a relation to what we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless his word to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Father. Bless your word to our hearts, we pray. We thank you that there's so much in this little tiny book. And yet, Lord, we've uh, been quite simple tonight uh, with our explanations. But Lord, I just pray that in the little things that we've gleaned from these few verses, Lord, there's so much to glean from your word in the light of what we've studied over the last 11 weeks previous. And so, Lord, bless your word to our hearts. Keep it alive in our hearts so that when we come back to the book of Ruth, Lord, we shall just be 
thrilled in our souls with the next episode in Jesus' name. Amen.